and have a lovely sunny day is upon us and work is continued outside so right now we're actually charging the van uh, straight over solar got the charger hooked up to my extension lead inverter running but it's getting a bit toasty not really suited for 16 amps but you know it's fine and we're putting out about 800 watts from those panels so not enough to completely charge the van but uh, we're going to drain like most of it from the battery and we'll regain our 10-ish kilowatt hours in a day or two, no prob. Free driving. Yeah, so, I have been working on covering up uh, the rest of the uh, trench and it's gone very well. So I've installed all my lawn modules and I've just been uh, flattening, into, flattening it with my boots and then driving over it with a van and it's really turned out quite well. You can't tell which of the tire tracks is the actual uh, trench, really, until you get to right at the end here, and you can see we can't get any closer because there's a bunch of crap in the way. So from here on, I've just had to use the sledgehammer and my own raw virile power so I haven't done this part yet because I need to get this made into a wall first. Uh, no problem, we're just waiting. Well, we're not waiting, I want to finish this video snippet and then I'm going to be putting this on. I still haven't got my uh, solar connectory box that's going to go somewhere there, but we can bolt these to the wall anyway, it's, it's fine. This is turning out so well. The lawn is probably more even than it was when I started. You can barely tell if there's anything buried here at all. <laughs> all my work completely gone. You can't even see it anymore. So this spot uh, used to be a tractor tire. In fact, uh, that tractor tire on the left side of there above a tree uh, had been lying right here for, well, more than 20 years and uh, I just removed it because I was going to put a solar panel rack here which, well, didn't pan out uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, pro hopefully going to get reclaimed by the lawn soon enough I hope so anyway, I might even it out a bit more by hand just making it flat so we don't get in horrible terrain to uh, crunch the lawnmower blade on hmm what days? Just look at that sky. It's so, so lovely. All of this energy for me. And the sun is setting behind a cloud. So I think it's about time we'll finish up for today. And this is what's been achieved aside from the earth stomping. So. I have mounted my, well, mostly mounted my very homemade S bend uh, to the wall there, and I've uh, taped the uh, solar cables coming out. These are double insulated, so they're, 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 they're reasonably durable on their own, but I like to have some high quality Nito tape right where they're coming out, just in case. Also, taped the 230 volt cable it's also super hardcore but uh, better safe than sorry uh, there's tape on the solar cable inside this uh, like extension uh, this is the ground pipe this is my s bend so they're two separate pieces i can move around there uh, and that's also taped together so this is intentionally left kind of floating because i want to have some flexibility when i get my solar breaker box to kind of move it around a bit and mount it however I wanted to uh, better better to make it all properly secured once you have all the pieces uh, and uh, once I got about as done with that as I managed to get I've just installed the 230 volt cable going into the barn clamping it uh, as far as I can get uh, without uh, the weather coming in my way. Uh, so I've also disconnected the original 
wiring there is disconnected on the other end. Uh, so that uh, revealed some horrors. Uh, it's that old rusted thing is not in great shape, and uh, let's see. I think I have the original wiring here. It's like fabric covered uh, aluminium protected uh, cable and is just in terrible terrible shape it's it did not cut nicely and it this stuff this tends to just crumple on the inside as it gets old so this thing if I were to slit this up a bit it would just uh, turn into dust basically these these old cables are not something you want to have around jeez that's pretty hard <laughs> Uh, got to do with the aluminium casing on there. So I've cut that off right uh, where it uh, enters. You can see if I to the left of a lamp. And uh, I'm going to take my new cable in right there. But uh, that's uh, a project for tomorrow with some more brightness in the sky. Uh, I'm going to, probably when the electrical installs are here, I'm going to cut this down because it's not going straight to the house it's going to the pole over there and I don't want to climb up in that and get myself killed uh, but uh, we're probably gonna cut it in the pole and well probably I don't know but they'll get to make a judgment call on that maybe safer not to be up in the pole because this is a reasonably heavy cable it's you know 50 meters of uh, steel cable and aluminium core wire it's going to weigh a fair amount. It, the pole's probably going to swing a bit when we cut it down. Hopefully it's not going to come tumbling down. <sighs> but that's not a problem for tonight. I might do some more work inside, but I doubt it. I doubt it. I'm lazy. It's Sunday. It's okay to be lazy on Sunday. Okay, so welcome to the old grey pesho of solar engineering. Yeah. So I received my uh, switch box slash over voltage protection for uh, the solar string today. And uh, this thing is a bit nicer than I thought. Uh, it's a Zebeni something or the other. There's all the numbers for you if you want to look it up. Uh, but uh, this is uh, not only an isolation switch and uh, uh, over voltage protection device, uh, it's uh, also a combiner for two identical strings uh, and I don't need that feature however I do need uh, to use uh, two uh, separate channels uh, because I've run uh, four uh, wires to uh, the house and this thing can be modified very easily to accommodate that except we'll use over voltage protection for one of the strings because everything in here is doubled up and uh, this switch is pretty hardcore uh, because right now it's wired uh, in a series with itself. So the way this thing works is you have the positive for... Stay in place, you stupid thing. You have a positive for uh, string 1 and string 2, negatives for string 1 and string 2. They just go uh, to bus bars up top here, and then they go into a positive and negative on the surge protection device. And that also goes to ground, so if you have any overvoltage situation anywhere, uh, it's going to explode these and uh, tie that to ground, hopefully saving your inverter and your panels. Uh, and after that, it just goes out in the black and red wire to this uh, heavy duty uh, switch, which is very highly rated. And uh, they run this in series with itself because it's just jumping across here. So you have one, two, three, four switches, and it goes in through the switch over there across down through the next switch and then this is your output and the same on the other side up across and out and in this configuration i think this switch is rated for 32 amps at 1200 volts which is uh, very good for running two parallel strings which we won't be using so what i'm going to do is get rid of these jumpers turn this back into two switches uh, which is rated for 13 amps at 800 volts which is uh, much closer to what we're going to run, still well within specification, and uh, this will let me run two strings. I'm also going to cut these bus bars, take uh, two of these, shove them over there, 
just kind of muck everything around. So we have one channel, channel 1 plus 1 minus, that gets the over voltage protection and goes through the switch and goes out. And then we'll have channel 2, which is just going in through these uh, uh, fuse holders. Uh, God damn it. Uh, in through these fuse holders and uh, then straight out. So that lets me uh, just double up and uh, cut both strings with this one box without having to have any separate stuff. The only downside is uh, I'm only going to have over voltage protection for one of the strings. But, uh, you know, that's that's good enough for starters. I can add an external over voltage protection device for the other one if I even do that. Uh, I think, uh, like, channel 2 is only going to run for the 150 volt system for the time being. Uh, so it's not going to be very... Uh, crucial with over voltage protection and stuff like that. It's small, it's low to the ground, it's not going to get hit by lightning. Really, the, the, the biggest risk by far is that the uh, one that's mounted to the top of a barn gets hit by lightning, and that's why we need this. And the thing that's lower down than that, you know, lightning strikes the highest point, uh, yeah, anything below that is uh, very unlikely to get hit. So I'm just going to uh, grab my engineering bag, sit here in my old Perche and uh, modify my solar box. Okay, and uh, there is our modified solar box. Let's uh, see so, uh, what's going on is we have these two, positive and negative two, have been completely separated from all of this stuff and they just go straight into the PV switch and uh, because this is an evil, horrible switch, they go in there, negative, positive, and come out here, positive, negative. So it's uh, inverted and across. It, it's the least logical way they could possibly have hooked it up, except for having it come out there. Uh, but, oh well, what are you going to do? I've marked it up, so that's fine. And uh, these just basically work as they did before. We have positive and negative coming in, going through jumpers to surge protector and through wiring out to the switch and they go across and down and come out there. So we have this little extra bit here basically where I can hook my low voltage panels if I want to or if as I'm hoping is going to happen at some point uh, like a 12 panel uh, array mounted on the southern side of a barn but uh, we'll have to see about that. It's It's all it's going to be the low voltage DC string uh, for starts, I do think. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're, we are completely separated now. These systems have nothing to do with each other. They just go through the same switch. On, off. No, off, on. That's off. Locked off, even. You can put a lock through this if you want to. Decent box. Don't mind it at all. So now it's time to get it mounted. And there it is. Mostly in place, just missing a few minor bits and bobs to tie everything together. Uh, so it went very smoothly just to putting it on there. I used the uh, rear mount, there's some holes you can drill in the back there, and the little uh, plastic plugs you put on top of the screw, so it's mounted uh, nice and uh, flush, no external mount at all. Looking very sharp, I put some a glue between the, the screw and the box there in there so that's not going to be in a leakage if there's uh, rainwater running down back here it's not going to get in and pull up uh, at the bottom of the box uh, so I left as you can see quite a bit of slack in fact two complete turns of the wire that's coming from underground because if something happens if thunder strikes and explodes the switch and explodes everything I wouldn't be able to just snip off you know a fair bit of this and just redo it without having to like add an extender box down there or something stupid like that rather have five meters too much than five centimeters too little and uh, everything's word up according to the schematic I drew so it's on me to make uh, sure that this is correct, but it should be. Uh, I don't believe in these, uh, like, uh, terminatory things uh, that you're supposed to put on wires. 
they usually just cause more failures than they avoid and if you're thorough and make sure you don't get any strands poking out the sides when you put everything in uh, you're going to be absolutely fine uh, in an installation like this there's really no point to have one of these crimpy bits on they just I have fixed so many things by just removing the crimpy bit and put the wire straight in because uh, these don't crimp very well they're not high quality and uh, they tend to fail with moisture and age. So everything's put back as it should be. I just have to screw the caps on and put the front back and uh, this thing's ready to accept some solar panels. Beautiful. Oh yeah, and uh, I did manage to ruin the original uh, earthy uh, clamp type thing because it, it it it's like it wasn't really straight it was like this from factory so I was going to take it out and straighten it uh, but when I did that uh, I lost the little nut thing that goes on the end there and it's completely custom piece of stamped metal it's down there somewhere give me a call if you find it but we just put another one in there that's higher quality so I'm not missing this thing it's really like when it comes in that shape from a factory, you know, doesn't really instill confidence. But other than that, good experience for a box. Ah, but it's uh, run to a close, drawn to a close again. And uh, aside from the solar box, I've also had time to install the uh, two photovolt wiring properly now. So there you have it going in to the uh, internal wiring of a barn uh, it's going if, if you're not aware the reason you take it down around like that is uh, in case there's uh, water running uh, down the cable is going to drip down on the outside rather than run through the hole uh, and uh, enter into the wall and I'm not going to bother going off there to show you because it's literally just uh, three wires going into a box there you can see the black wire there coming in and going out to the rest of the stuff and uh, sadly we have more like that black wire going down there with the wooden holders uh, that's uh, actually more of that terrible stuff that just crumples and falls to p falls apart when you look at it wrong so uh, if I hook up the other end of that wire to anything I'll finally have my lights, which I put in last year, which receive, have they've got like 10 hours of use out of them before the uh, uh, airborne cable just uh, got so bad I had to disconnect it. So I also get my radio, which is a nice change of pace, not having to have a van sitting outside playing music. God, that, that looks so bad, doesn't it? Just a mess of wires. And <laughs> a free free legged stereo just kind of Oh wow that's oh it's act it's actually bolted in <laughs> my, my, my stereo is theft proofed. We should be powered now for the first time in a year or so. These lights have not been on. Beautiful. Ah. <sighs> Now it's a proper barn. Oh, no, it's not. It's not a proper barn yet. It's not a proper barn yet. Never before have I 
I've been so happy to hear the uh, end of tri broadcast music from a local radio station. And literally 10 seconds after that, uh, I think the power transistors in the amplifier committed to Sudoku. <laughs> 